is uh, on observation theory. Uh, the background here is a, a photograph of a, of a um, plaster wall. Uh, we might take a look at it and uh, all agree and describe it as a brown wall. Um, but looking more closely, we see that uh, it uh, has lots of different tones of wall and a lot of texture. And um, uh, describing that becomes more uh, complicated, say. And indeed, it's uh, in, in the deviations from the brown where the beauty uh, lies. And uh, we may say that the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Ah. I deviate a little bit here. I'm the editor of, of uh, this publication, Earthzine. It's an IEEE publication uh, and a contribution to the Intergovernmental Group on uh, Earth Observation. And it supports uh, the establishment of a uh, global Earth observing system of systems. And it's uh, doing so and being designed uh, around Earth observation for the benefit of society. And we may. Uh, say, well, what does this have to do with observation theory? It's uh, in, uh, through observation that we become aware. And this is true for the astronomer looking out into uh, the universe and discovering new uh, uh, planetary systems or galaxies. And uh, for the monk who looks inward and um, to, discovers uh, the divine, or uh, a mother who uh, looks, washes diligently uh, after the, her, her children. Um, now, uh, this uh, presentation deviates uh, quite a bit from um, previous uh, presentations, but uh, the audience is significantly different, and I imagine you all uh, recognize that, uh, the precognates in the audience. And so uh, I'm going to uh, kind of uh, go uh, briefly kind of in, uh, into the um, gist of the theory and uh, uh, what leading to the concept of ensemble detection and analysis and um, uh, like to get into more uh, what the interpretation of the underlying mathematics is. Um, pretty interesting. Now, how I got into this was uh, I designed radiometer systems, and uh, I found that there's not a general, uh, uh, a single method. And what I uh, did as part of my dissertation studies is develop the methodology using measurement uncertainty as a figure of merit for uh, comparative analysis of radiometer designs. Radiometers are the whole reason we have to have this fancy calibration architecture at the front end of the system is uh, because the uh, system response varies, varies with time. And um, it's this uh, temporal variability that uh, leads to the non-stationary conundrum, which is um, described, you take a look at a process at one space in time and you get one answer and look at it at a different place, you get a, get a different set of statistics. And um, currently, we really don't have a uh, very good way of, of describing that. Well, uh, and I found, ran into this problem in developing uh, a generalized methodology. Um, here, uh, you see a, a radiometer system with gain fluctuations. And the gain fluctuations uh, in observing each one of the uh, uh, temperature references appear as uh, in each of the time series of the different references. Now, what we do in radiometry is we apply uh, a calibration algorithm F, which combines the calibration references in making an estimate of what uh, the brightness temperature is. And uh, we can um, take a look at what the uncertainty in the estimate is by, uh, and here I, I show some analysis with the data, and I, uh, the brackets here are the uh, statistical operation, uh, st statistical calculation from the data. And we see that using a uh, two-pair algorithm, using two pairs of calibration measurements to estimate what the uh, brightness temperature at, uh, at some different time is, and we can slide, slide this time across. And what we see is we get minimum uncertainty at the time when uh, the uh, 
uh, estimate is being made at the, at the calibration, a local maximum when it's right in between, a local minimum, and we can, uh, I've done, I showed this for, for different T1s. Now, what uh, enables this uh, type of analysis is, is that uh, we have a collection of ensemble data which uh, uh, describes the, the, which has the fluctuations of the receiver. Now, uh, uh, the challenge is, is in, in modeling this, okay, taking, um, you know, calculating what the uh, uncertainty is from, from uh, a, um, a, a model. And uh, let's leave it here. Now, <coughs> calibration has uh, a few different things, does a few different things for us. One is it provides scale, which we can assign value. Another is, is that it, the, uh, from that, it, we are able to uh, distinguish, uh, say, a signal from background noise. Another thing that calibration does is it provides the means of comparing measurements made at one place in time, say here in Boulder yesterday, to a measurement made tomorrow in France. And it's these properties of calibration that make it very useful to studying and characterizing non-stationary non -stationary processes. And there's lots of different uh, approaches in, uh, to modeling and characterizing non-stationary processes uh, that have been say fashionable over the years and um, more recently uh, there's uh, work by Norton Wong and all uh, empirical mode decomposition and uh, all, all these have uh, something in common is that they uh, they're based upon a single realization of the data and um, here I introduce uh, ensemble detection and analysis as a new method that uh, complements these uh, previous things. Uh, looking more closely at, at, at this, stochastic process theory is kind of an outgrowth of probability theory where uh, a uh, realization is, is one of a set of ensemble possibilities and uh, we have a, a mapping function which uh, takes um, where, where realization comes. So this, it make, this diagram over here shows, uh, say, an ensemble set of uh, time series where all of these kind of e exist, uh, say, simultaneously, and what we get a, a, from a single real realization is a selection of one of these. And this uh, treatment of the mathematics uh, is uh, led to the autocorrelation function and uh, lots of... Uh, uh, from which uh, we can uh, calculate what the what the variance of the process is, um, but there, there's really really a problem, and this has been been a stigma in applying uh, non-station or uh, stochastic process theory more broadly in in uh, science and engineering practices, and and that is that the uh, ensemble statistics that that we get don't really match uh, the measurements we get whenever we change the observation interval. And uh, that can be uh, part of the uh, problem I see is that the ensemble changes. You know, processes, uh, processes die and are born. And uh, alternatively, and this kind of com has come out of uh, the uh, formulation of the mathematics is, is the treatment of uh, the uncertainty where uh, I uh, estimate the uh, uncertainty in the process uh, at, uh, in est I uh, calculate the uncertainty in the process um, in estimating the mean value at one point in time from a measurement made at a different point in time. And uh, this uh, and so doing, I uh, kind of uh, treat instead of the the process as non-stationary, I treat it as a as an array of uh, random events, with each event having a conditional probability uh, density function, and uh, the uh, each random variable has uh, the uh, statistics that the random variable takes depends upon the way it's uh, applied uh, in the. Um, depends upon how, how, how it's used. And uh, this uh, kind of formulation has kind of led me to realize that, hey, this has uh, 
a connection with, uh, say, conscious uh, phenomena or, or the experience that how can um, um, an event in time uh, be interpreted in two completely different ways that, from different points of time. And it's about this, uh, when I was looking at this, uh, that a, uh, a friend of mine pointed me to the work of uh, Robert John and Brenda Dunn, and uh, I realized that, you know, what they were doing with uh, the, um, uh, um, the field regs and the random event generators, it was, was based upon noise measurements using a circuit much like uh, we use in radiometry, kind of like a Dickey radiometer circuit. And so, and, and that's how I came about uh, being here, and I certainly appreciate uh, them pointing me in this direction. <coughs> Here, here's a, a few uncertainty models, uh, kind of different for a stationary process. Uh, you, uh, the uncertainty is independent, really, of, of the temporal separation between TC and TA here. For uh, uh, non-station uncertainty, uh, uh, the uncertainty is minimum at the same time and increases uh, way, and we can have local stationary, local non-stationary, and uh, here's an asymmetric uncertainty certainty and these are uh, kind of models that I've, I've used in, in my data. This is a parametric fit to uh, some radiometer data that I showed previously, same data, and I'm using a four parameter model here to, to uh, characterize the, the uh, to a linear fit for the uncertainty and a linear fit to the correlation. Uh, and uh, what's interesting is, is that, you know, uh, there's, um, well, there's lots of interesting features in, the, in this data uh, that uh, you see uh, there's a cor correlation a a a aspect when uh, the, the two pairs of calibration measurements are close in, in uh, time. Uh, they produce a higher uncertainty whenever the uh, calibration algorithm is extrapolated then uh, as you separate so that kind of indicates another interesting feature is you take a look that uh, if uh, on on this side the uh, uncertainty is is higher than what the model is and on this side it, it's uh, lower you can see that in this red curve here well uh, that indicates that the, you know, for this data set, the uh, calibration has greater uncertainty in uh, estimating a future value than in, in, in the past. Uh, the uh, future is more uncertain than the past in, in this uh, data set. And uh, using uh, a one parameter asymmetry term in, in my model, I can uh, uh, correct for that and, and get a really pretty nice fit. And you can see that indeed there's, there's an asymmetry in the model. Well, two minutes, okay. Uh, well, this uh, uh, kind of analysis and concept uh, is, uh, has been applied to radiometry, but it is indeed generalized uh, to, uh, the math is very generalized, and so um, uh, the thought is to uh, use calibrated noise uh, in characterizing non-stationary forcing functions in uh, what I call uh, ensemble detection and analysis here. Uh, there's uh, loads of um, applications. One of the really neat things about this is that there are a uh, wide number of applications that uh, from instrument system analysis and uh, sampling strategy optimization and uh, in information processing, which uh, is uh, quite useful. I mean, uh, this is uh, kind of uh, shows how a model can be uh, uh, used in, uh, say, uh, optimizing sampling strategy uh, NASA be interested in this and uh, determining well with uh, one satellite we can sample uh, uh, with such a frequency and get get this type of uncertainty this level of uncertainty but if we use three satellites we can increase the sampling frequency and and uh, improve the uncertainty in the measurement and has uh, application to, to climate modeling, as I show uh, here. It's uh, interesting, there's a, um, other uh, works are being published that I've seen in, in the uh, past few, few years uh, of uh, using, uh, adding noise to the uh, thing. 
uh, I'll finish up here with the uh, interpretation of the mathematics. What the mathematics uh, means uh, is that uh, you know, the uh, time space comprise an array of events across which a stochastic wave propagates and um, the, the present is characterized by minimum uncertainty uh, and uh, that p time points in the direction of greater uncertainty. If uh, the past is, is equally uncertain as, as the future, the, the process would be uh, stationary. Um, and uh, observation, uh, the outcome depends upon this perspective and uh, as, as well as uh, the uh, assignment of values, uh, uh, the, the, the values that we assign to our references and the way we use those references in, in assigning value to uh, our, the outcomes that we observe. Uh, the uh, uncertainty is a characteristic property of this stochastic wave, uh, and uh, the um, um, value of uncertainty depends upon uh, the weighting of uh, the future and, and, and past. And, uh, and finally, ensemble detection provides a means of uh, detec detecting this uh, stochastic wave. Anyway, I may uh, stop there. Got a couple more, but I'd certainly like to hear your questions. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions? Yeah. Yes, I have a question. Uh, thank you very much. You've given me uh, a lot to think about. Years ago, I did a lot of signal analysis work, and I'm wondering if the, you probably said it, and I didn't quite grasp it, the connection between pattern adaptive pattern recognition as used in signal processing and what you are talking about here. Uh, how do those correlate? Uh -huh. Well, uh, uh, the, it, this uh, technique, uh, ensemble detection and analysis, certainly has uh, application to uh, 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 pattern uh, recognition and analysis. This uh, would um, uh, really, uh, I, and, and I have a, have a concept of for applying it to, say, image recognition, where I use uh, correlated references and taking a look at the, the correlation between um, sampled events. Uh, in, in terms of uh, its utilization, one is coming up with a, uh, uh, taking a, a set of data, uh, 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 evaluating, calculating what a, a stochastic uh, parametric model which describes that data and then uh, take new data coming in and, and compare the, the data and either we detect a change or uh, uh, adapt, adapt the model, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Garrett. So perhaps following from that question, uh, it would be helpful to me, can you give a specific example of, say, uh, a random event generator output, uh, something like from the Pear Lab, uh, how you would analyze it? What would you take, mm -hmm. what would you do with that data, and how would that help in understanding uh, PK effects or, or uh, predictability effects? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, that's an interesting question, and I uh, have, have some thoughts about how to kind of uh, adapt the the regs to uh, using this technique? Really, it's uh, uh, in, in instead of taking a look at, at a time series of, of random events from say a a, a, a single noise source, use uh, uh, what, and having that be the 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 control signal that we're looking at as you know how it goes up and goes down and uh, the role. Uh, uh, have have the say the control signal that's being analyzed be the uh, the um, uh, uh, gain of the, re the of the receiver say and uh, use calibrated noise to uh, um, uh, um, to uh, detect changes in, in that gain that would allow uh, um, more. Uh, Temporal processing of the data, say being able to apply uh, a calibration algorithm in one time to uh, 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 fluctuations that are being seen uh, during, say, an event of interest. 
As, as you may know, the Roger Nelson's Global Consciousness Project has all of its data available online. And it may be really interesting for someone with your perspective to take a look at that data and just see if you can glean uh, different information from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, certainly I, I'm uh, interested in, in, uh, in that. It, um, it's, uh, you know, I um, um, see uh, advantages in kind of uh, adapting the design where instead of using like a, a, a single uh, random event generator, uh, albeit um, the, the eggs are, are dis discrete, but uh, coupling them together and using uh, uh, a random event generator with uh, calibrated noise with, and, and when I say calibrated noise, the, uh, the, the noise has, an, uh, has different noise power levels to it, which have an a priori uh, 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 statistical relationship from which you can detect deviations from uh, uh, the stationary assumption. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, we'll end the uh, morning session.